So you love analytics. Now, you're not a math god, nor do you want to code and write formulas all day. But you do enjoy numbers, metrics, and data analysis. Now, this isn't a contradiction. Let me give you an example. If you have a trading data set of historical trades, a quant might look at that and say, all right, I'm going to do some time series analysis. Arima, Arma, Garch. I'm going to do all these fancy formulas and project out future paths of this data. Pretty complicated. But somebody who just enjoys analytics might take some averages in the data set, create some pivot tables, and maybe use Excel for some linear regression. You're still analyzing the data and getting involved in it, but you're not quite doing that extensive formulation and coding. Now, one caveat is that all analytic roles do require SQL, VBA, and Python. It's not hardcore programming like you might do as a quant, but these languages are required. In fact, in 2013, when I created Script Uni, if you look on that site, those are the only three languages that I teach. And it's specifically for this reason. I taught them, and when I recorded those lectures, I integrated a ton of finance into that, so entry-level analysts for all these analytic roles would have that background in these languages. Now, there are a tremendous amount of analytical roles. In fact, I'm going to break this one topic into a few lectures. The one that's the most popular is risk management. Risk management has a bunch of different areas. The five most popular risk management areas in finance are market risk, credit risk, operational risk, liquidity risk, and compliance. For this video, I'm going to focus exclusively on market risk. Now, within market risk, there are four different positions I'd like to talk about. Firm risk management, desk coverage of firm risk management, sales and trading risk management, and buy side risk management. On the sell side, firm risk management. Well, it's firm risk management. What you're doing is you're looking at all those trading numbers from all the different desks and asset classes rolled up into one big number. You're reviewing that number every day and approving it. It's strictly about regulation. In fact, this role didn't really exist before 2008. When I started in 2013 on the Morgan Stanley Risk Desk, there were about 40 or 50 firm risk analysts, and now there are about 1,000. So it's a role that's just been growing by leaps and bounds. There are a lot of different roles within firm risk. There's risk, risk reporting, risk analytics, and a bunch of other ones as well. So a ton of opportunities there. Desk coverage risk management in the firm risk management division is where you focus on a specific asset class. You're not looking at the firm level number, but you're sitting on the equities desk or on the foreign exchange desk, and you're deeply involved in the actual trades. You review the trades for risk every day and approve them, and those numbers then get rolled up to firm risk. I love that role for networking reasons, but we'll get to that in a bit. Sales and trading risk management is risk management, but you don't report to firm risk, you report to the sales and trading division. So that is the best paying risk role, obviously, on the sell side because you're reporting to the trading team. It's also one of the best ways to transition into a sales and trading role, but we'll get to that soon. Buy side risk, we discussed this last week. It's a little bit of everything, about 33% valuation, 33% risk, 33% reporting. You're really a jack of all trades. It's a very mobile role. The moving around in the firm is very easy and it pays excellent for little career risk because you're not a trader or a PM. So if something goes wrong or numbers are down this year, it's not your fault. You're just a risk manager. Now, the questions we ask every week, what are the work hours? Well, risk managers just tend to have really good work hours, especially firm risk because you're not tied to a trading desk. You usually start about 8.30 and end about 6.00. The other risk roles are more tied to the trading desk. So whatever the trader's hours are, those are typically the hours you're going to be working. Is the work repetitive? Only for firm risk, because in firm risk, your main responsibility is looking at that big number or those big numbers every day, making sure you're familiar with them, signing off that they're okay, and that's it. Now, sure, you'll do other things like work on projects throughout the afternoon, but those aren't your primary responsibilities. The other roles, though, you're typically doing, especially the sales and trading risk and the buy side risk, you're doing a lot of other things. You're writing macros, you're doing some reporting. So there's a lot going on, so it stays pretty fresh. Are the people nice? Yes, it's risk. It's not a money-making role, so people aren't quite as competitive, and therefore they're pretty nice to each other. Do firms matter? Not so much on the buy side, 
But on the sell side, especially if you're in one of the firm risk roles, brand is pretty important, especially early on in your career. Like I mentioned in an earlier video, by 2014, I was only a year into my career, but I was already getting calls off the hook from hedge funds and recruiters just because I was a Morgan Stanley risk analyst. How do you progress your career? Well, the typical ways, project management, managing expectations of people that you're delivering projects to, time management, but there's something new and most important is for all these risk roles, know your numbers. If you're doing firm risk, you need to know what to expect from those big high level firm risk numbers, as well as asset classes, what numbers they produce usually, what the balances usually are. You need to know these numbers for a variety of reasons, of course, for your job and to be able to talk to senior management, but also for interview skills. And just when you talk to people in the industry, you'll sound smarter if you actually know the numbers. Exit opportunities, ironically, it's risk, but they happen to be fantastic. Even in firm risk management, which is a pretty repetitive role, I've seen many executive directors get pulled over to the buy side, which to me really didn't make sense, but it happens. So the exit opportunities are there. And certainly if you're in sales and trading risk or on the buy side, moving into a trading role or a sales road role is uh, pretty easy. Now, that happens not naturally. It's not like the traders are like, oh, we need another trader, let's grab that risk analyst. That does not happen. But if you have conversations with the traders and with the salespeople, just friendly with them, grabbing coffees and say, you know what? In the future, at some point, I'd love to be a trader. And you keep an open dialogue, but you don't ask for a role. Your manager probably wouldn't like that. But you let them know then when the position opens and if you've been a good risk manager, they're gonna think of you and you'll be the natural fit for that role. Do I need a master's degree? So in all of these roles that we've talked about, you start with a bachelor's degree. But interestingly enough, not on the buy side, but the other three roles we talked about, as they approach director, I've noticed all of them have master's degrees and a lot of them have FRM certification. So good idea, start your degree, start your career rather, with a bachelor's degree, and then do a part-time master's and grab that FRM certification at some point along the way. Thanks for watching and have a great week.